everyone, this is Garrett, and this is Painkiller, and we are going to do the prison level, level 1 of chapter 2, which is apparently only available on Difficulties Nightmare and upwards, and let's do it. Okay, so this level starts off quite nice, and immediately the moment we start walking forwards, boom, new enemy types. They have machine guns in their belly. It's, it's a problem. But fortunately, they die quite quickly. In order to get the tarot card in this level, we have to make sure not to use explosive weapons. And that uh, effectively just revolves around not using the grenade. As you can see, finish a level using only non-explosive weapons. You can still destroy barrels, which is nice because there... I, <laughs> if you couldn't destroy barrels in this level, then I don't think there is any way imaginable that you would ever get through this level at all. There is so much explosive stuff in this level. Now, the secrets in this level, for the most part, are not so bad. There's a couple which are kind of hard to get, and I kind of want to get that money before I get one of them. And there's also an armor up here, which I want as well. But there's a non-spinny thingy, and behind it, there's two invisible barrels. If you, ch if you try to hit the painkiller through the hole, generally, it'll explode, and the thing will come out. And it's nice. I'm just going to move that thing a little bit further away. Hitting it with the painkiller actually seems to move things slightly quicker than when you would ordinarily just push them. And since we're not dealing with explosive barrels this time, we can just use this box to move it slightly forward. Come on. It would be good if box cooperates. Sometimes physics are not the most helpful thing. And this is one of those times. It seems that this box is... Ah, there we go. I think the box on top is probably nudged on it in a weird way, and now it, it's just having a hard time getting out of that position. But I do actually need that box, so thank you. And I'm going to put this in front of that hole right there. And I'm sorry for the noise that this weapon makes, but it's, it can't be helped, I'm afraid. This is just a little bit more of an effective way of moving the box where I need it to be. And with the power of physics... I'm going to move it roughly over here, and now I'm just going to jump into it while just mashing the jump button while hitting it. And for some reason, with this magical box thing, you have a tendency of just sort of flying upwards in a weird way. And that is pretty much the only way I could figure out how to get inside this hole. There is some other weird stacking stuff you can do, but it's just too much of a hassle for me, and this works as well. And there's a holy item in here. And having gotten that holy item, we can either move on through that hole right there, or we can, um, as in through that doorway rather, or we can just continue through this passageway and fall down this place, which leads to the exact same area. And we stand directly in front of some new enemies. That guy has a stun rod. He hits you, and then the screen goes a bit weird. And it's kind of annoying. They, most, they pretty much only do melee attacks, but they're not really too scary because they die in one hit. And after having taken care of that, I'm actually a little bit lucky. Uh, normally, there is this explosive, like, tube, which is standing roughly over here. And when you shoot it, it starts to fly off in sort of random directions, really, depending on what the physics feel like doing at the time. But fortunately, that tube got destroyed when we destroyed those barrels earlier, so that's nice. Not really sure what the battle music's playing right now, but when we move through this door, enemies will actually start spawning. And some of them are next to that barrel, which is nice. And there's some more of those tubes just, just flying through the room. There's fire just everywhere, and after a while they explode. And this level is kind of a nightmare because of it. Because there's a very, fairly good chance you'll just have one of those tubes go right in your face and explode. And they deal about the same damage as an explosive barrel, so it is... It's terrifying, is what it is. <laughs> but once you kill most of the enemies, these guys start spawning through that door. And once you kill all of those enemies... It opens up this door over here. I think... Hmm, is there still one alive somewhere? Yes, there is. That's why it didn't open yet. There we go. And then this door is going to open and spawn a whole bunch more of these machine gun dudes. So, they don't really deal a whole lot of damage, which is kind of nice. Because otherwise, this place would be rather scary. I accidentally touched that checkpoint before I really wanted to, but oh well. It's not like we're going to die in this playthrough. Because I'll just reload a safe on and pretend it never happened. But... There's some stuff up here that I want. There's another tube. Which, look at them. Look at it go. It just flew through the window. <laughs> Those things can go absolutely everywhere, and it is terrifying. Not quite what I was going for with that stake. Let's try that again. There's a barrel there, and I don't like having barrels near me at any point in time. 
But there's a barrel there, and it gives us some more armor because it's next to it. And there's also some ammo boxes right here. Pretty much touching one of these things sometimes will just get it going. I don't really understand how they work, but for some reason they have a tendency of just breaking randomly. And it's it's so mortifying. It really is to just kind of randomly have a bomb just fly through the room. Anyway, I'm going to walk through this door. Immediately shoot this barrel right there because that's where I'm going to roll down. And shoot those tubes over there and then run up this stairway because... Those tubes scare me, and I want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. And there's a couple of enemies here, which I'd rather just take care of as quickly as possible. Not really sure why he didn't attack me, but maybe his corpse was just spazzing out rather than him. So before I actually continue, there is actually an enemy over there. You might not be able to see it very well, but those two little black dots, that's a turret. And there you go, that's, that's the turret. Those things are probably the strongest enemy in the level and standing in front of it for just a couple seconds is enough to get killed So I'd rather take care of them before they can shoot me and You need to be if you stand in specific spots then they won't do anything But there's a couple of them in this level and they're all just sort of nastily hidden and it's kind of annoying But I'm gonna shoot these guys. There's another room just filled with those two explosive tubes everywhere So I'm just gonna shoot those and then take care of the guys on top of the staircase right here and while people are just getting killed by all those explosions, I'm going to take care of these guys as well. And we have some frozen stuff. Fortunately, I didn't hit that because that would be kind of annoying, but oh well. And we killed it with the barrels. So, there's actually a manhole here. And that manhole doesn't always open. I'm not really sure why. It very rarely doesn't open, but every now and then it will just stay closed. But it's supposed to open after you kill all the enemies here. I think it might still open after you just beat the level, because that should open every door. But going through that manhole has three of these ammo boxes, which have a whole bunch of secondary fire for a shotgun. And that's really all there is down there. Um, and that's just really useful to have. It's kind of a shame if you have to backtrack for it, because... Having that secondary fire is just really helpful, and it would be kind of useless to have after you've already killed everything anyway, so... Yeah, would be a shame. But, we're gonna move forward, jump through here, more tubes, more hoping that they don't fly into our face. That's, that's my strategy. Oh, like that one was, and it did a fair amount of damage. Didn't quite get it as low as possible, but it still scares me. There's actually some health over here, so I'm just gonna grab that right now. Otherwise, I would probably grab it after I've been through this room entirely. And we're... I'm just gonna turn on my tarot cards, actually. Why not? Destroy that barrel and just start wrecking, wrecking everything. Because there is actually quite a few enemies on this floor right here. So you might as well make the use out of our tarot card because we really don't get much use out of it otherwise. And before I forget, don't go upstairs there yet because there is actually a couple turrets which have the capability of hitting us when we're on that second floor over there, or third floor, depending on how you want to call it. But... Uh, there's just so many enemies here as well. The, the projectiles from the alternate fire are kind of annoying when you're playing with the tarot cards turned on, because they actually seem to fly a lot slower as well. So you probably want to stick to using hit scan weapons like the shotgun, primary fire, and stuff like that, but... It is still useful, even if it takes a while for it to arrive, because in the end, it does help you pretty much insta-kill the enemies. So there's two more turrets here, one over there, and one over there, and there's a whole bunch of barrels, and I'm just gonna make sure they all explode, because it takes care of most of them. I'm gonna kill that guy up there, because why not? And look at this, just, I don't wanna be there. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until that's all blown over, and then I can pick up all this money that dropped from destroying all the barrels. And kill all these guys that are not really much of a threat right now. Really, the only threat in this level are barrels and turrets. And taking care of those as quickly as possible uh, makes the level just a lot easier. Which is also one of the reasons why I'm not really bothering picking up souls and stuff. Just because it's not really necessary. You either die pretty much instantly, or you don't die at all. So... As long as you remember about the turrets, then it's not so much to worry about. And there's not that many enemies in the level either, so devil, devil mode is not super useful here. Another armor. I don't know why, but sometimes you can't pick that armor up. I think it might have to do with how much armor you have, I suppose. But sometimes you'll have under 100 armor and you still won't be able to pick it up. But that might just be one of the mechanics from Painkiller, really, that I'm just not overly familiar with. But we move on. We're going to go through this room. There's a couple guys here. They're all jerks but there's only three of them. And going back, there's even more people here which are coming. Trying, one tried to headbutt me, but he didn't do a very good job at it because he I don't think he even damaged me. 
which is pretty impressive considering the way he was charging towards me. What, what are you going to do? There's another health power-up over here if you want it. I'm just going to pick it up for this hell of it because why not? More power-ups is always fun. And we get to go to this closed door. And here, the scream of a woman who doesn't actually appear to be anywhere in this room, but unless the woman is sitting on that table, which I suppose is possible, and we might as well check it out because it takes quite a while before the door is actually open again, but there's some rather weird looking enemy right here. Hands seem to be replaced with some sort of weird tentacles and kind of spooky, really. And that's the sound of a door opening. I don't know why it takes so long for that door to open. It just takes a while for some reason. But we go downstairs to the prison. And uh, there's an electric chair. And the electricity from the electric chair hurts quite a bit. So I don't really want to get too close to it. Instead, I'm going to walk through this door. Kill all these guys. Hope I don't hit those tubes. Hope the enemies don't hit those tubes. Because I'm pretty sure they can hit it as well. And kill everything there is. There's another turret over here. Rather a nasty one, because it's right across the corner and very easy to miss if you're not looking for it. And that was it. That was the last remaining enemies. There is a little switch over here, and if we push it with our face, it turns off the electric chair. And after a while, his body is going to disappear into nothingness. And the level exit opens. However, there is still a couple secrets area, secret areas we missed. So we're actually going to have to go back for those. One of them is in this room, which doesn't open until you kill all the enemies. And same goes for that way, I think. Yeah, this way. <laughs> I got a little bit lost there, but it's fine. We managed to find our way back again. And there is actually a prison cell, which is ordinarily closed, but it seems to open after you kill the final enemies right there and open up the level exit. And having picked up those last remaining holy items in the level, we can happily jump towards the level exit, which is downstairs next to that electric chair and there we go and uh that was the entire level it is uh, not a very long level and not using explosive weapons is pretty easy considering the entire level is exploding all the time anyway and apparently it's a level that only appears on nightmare difficulty and trauma difficulty so that's kind of nice it um, gives you a good incentive of actually playing on nightmare just to see all the different stuff and we get replenished double the ammo now mm. i I don't know. There there might be a use for this at some point, but I haven't really found one so far. But we'll see about that later. Maybe I'll change my mind on that. Maybe I won't. I probably won't, but I, I don't think it's worthwhile because there's generally so much ammo everywhere anyway. But that was the prison level, and the next time we play, we are going to do the opera house. So I hope you enjoyed it so far, and then that's what we're going to do next time. Bye-bye.